What's going on everybody? It's Ricky with Video Homicide back with day nine of the 31 days of horror here at Video Homicide. Oh my God. I just watched the most depressing film of all time and I've watched some pretty morbid documentaries around World War II and all sorts of stuff. But this movie is from 1984. It is called Threads. All right, and it was directed by Barry Hines. Now this was like a, a joint production from BBC and some uh, some like Australian network, but nonetheless, this movie Threads is uh, not, not at all what I expected. So this is a movie that my dad has had in the collection for a long time. It's one of his sort of, you know, bootleg little masterpieces as I call them, where uh, he had probably a cut, a cut case, like one of those ones where it's like a clamshell and he kind of like cannibalized it onto this old uh, Kodak tape, but it is the world video pictures uh, release of the film. And I will say this, the last like four minutes of the film on this, on this tape is cut off. Has anyone ever had that problem with this particular release before? So I had to watch the remaining couple of minutes on YouTube because the film currently is on YouTube in its entirety. And I had to uh, rip a copy onto a DVD-R just so I could watch the entire film, you know what I mean? And uh, man, I don't think I'll ever have to watch this again, but I know my dad is gonna wanna see it uh, like the last couple of minutes because I called him immediately after watching this film. I'm like, dude, I just watched Threads. And he's like, oh, fuck, I love Threads. And he's talking about, you know, like the scene with the lamb and, and, and all this other kind of crazy shit. Like the, the couple that are upstairs puking their guts out. Like, uh, and I told him, I said, like, do you remember the ending of it? And he said, uh, not really. He said, why, what happens? And I explained to him what happened at the ending of this tape. And he said, yeah, it sounds about right. And I said, so you don't remember anything after that? And he says, maybe. And I said, was it fucked up? He says he doesn't remember. So I'm going to have to give him a copy as well. But uh, Threads is a movie that takes place in 1984, right around the time of this, uh, you know, rising tensions between Russia and America. And uh, like they're threatening nuclear war and all this like very horrific stuff. So the movie kind of follows the story of uh, this this guy and this girl who are dating and uh, the girl ends up getting pregnant and they want to get engaged. So you kind of have the guy's family, the girl's family, and then you have this other guy who's like kind of like um, not really a political figure, but just a guy that's kind of a, you know, a, hi a higher up, so to speak. And, uh, you know, th like the, the tensions between the two countries get so bad during this invasion of Iran and uh, the two countries start nuclear bombing each other and uh, like and it all happens like around uh, England because that's where all the you know the mayhem's ensuing I don't know if there was bombing or it didn't really allude that there was bombing happening other places than England or Britain rather but uh, the, the, the place just gets terrorized like this movie is very relatable to the current state of uh, you know the world that we're in right now i.e. lots of panic buying looting um you know mass hysteria basically so uh once once the bombs start dropping in this film is when the movie really starts because it's it follows like the aftermath of a nuclear war basically like all the way up to like 15 years later uh the, the movie follows this weird kind of format where it's almost told in like um not news segments, but there's uh, there's constantly like text on the screen updating you, like the date and stuff like that. And uh, I found that really like kind of cool and interesting. It's, this is like unlike any movie I've ever seen before. Like I said, it's the only thing I can compare it to is like a World War II documentary or like a documentary on, you know, like a recession in, in uh, Britain back in the 80s. It's so... Uh, it's 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 80s but it's very timeless feeling because when i watched this like this just this beater old tape i was so immersed in the film and so like taken aback because like i said it's it's really hard to kind of review this movie without saying it's just a series of progressively you know like situations progressively getting worse and worse and it's very like i said it's it's almost like sad in certain parts because the girl that's pregnant uh, her boyfriend gets killed and then uh, she she kind of leaves her family to go find him in a way and uh, during her travels she sees all these people that are just like you know fucking devastated and there's a lots of good special effects in this film it's very um, you know not I was gonna I was gonna say Tom Savini ish but like just like very like kind of visceral like like easy looking like nothing like too too crazy there was some mutation on some people but it was more like 
you know, it wasn't as bad as like the guy in RoboCop getting melted, like, but like maybe like 4% of, of that type of radiation and, and burns and shit like that. And it's, it's really good. But anyways, the girl's walking and sees a, a woman holding like a dead baby and it resonates with her and it comes back in the form of flashbacks later. And uh, you, you pretty much once, once like that higher up guy is dead, cause like he goes to this bunker with a bunch of other higher ups and they're kind of running the show from this bunker and they end up dying down there because of lack of oxygen and stuff. But uh, once he goes and once the, the two parents kind of go, it's, it's all on this, the woman. And then uh, it follows her from, you know, from her leaving her home all the way to when she has her baby all the way to 10 years later. And then, and then like five years later when the girl's like 15 years old or some shit like that, excuse me. And uh, it's, Oh man, this is not the kind of movie you'd watch and like, you know, like on a, on a fucking Sunday, Sunday afternoon, you're not going to want to throw in threads unless you're a fucking sadomasochist, but, uh, who am I to blame you? But this is just not the type of movie that you probably ever want to watch again. Honestly, it's like watching, like, it's obviously not as bad cause it's not real, but like, if you've ever watched any kind of like Holocaust, uh, film footage or anything like that, and it just kind of like churns your stomach, this movie pretty much does that a large majority of the time because you almost put yourself in the situation. I know, well, that's what movies do. They make you feel like if, if you were there, what, what you would do. But this is just like so gut, like so gut churning because it's so like accurate. Like when you're seeing things like the, the mass, like the panic buying and all this and people going nuts, looting stores and stuff. It's so like shit that's happened within the last two years on earth. And it's fucking sad. Like, you know, if I had to recommend a movie to watch this as a double feature, I would probably say like uh, the fucking Triumph of the Will or something like that. <laughs> you know, if you if you know your shit, you might know what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, this this movie is very it's, it's it's also a TV movie. So like, what the fuck is going on? Like, what kind of like if I was a kid in 1984 and I threw this on, I would be and I lived in Britain, I'd probably be scarred for life. You know, and I think this mo movie probably did scar a lot of people. It says a highly acclaimed award-winning film. Like, what award did this win? Like, most the most horrible movie ever made. Like, it's a good movie, but it's so horrible to watch. Like, it makes you feel like you fucking just, you know, robbed an old lady or something. It's crazy. Like, there's there's lots of like rats and rats being sold as food at one point. And like I said, there's a part where they they find this dead lamb and they start eating it. And uh, man, it's oh fuck. What a twisted flick, man. But this is cool because it's got like the, uh, you know, like the the thing that my dad wrote on there way back in the day. Because when he used to just, well, he's not, I, I sometimes I feel like I talk about him like he's not alive anymore. But when he displays his uh, his tapes, he would he would usually display them like that. Or excuse me, like that. And there'd be like, blah, 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 like that kind of thing. Whereas I display them uh, by the spine. So on all the movies that are up here, like behind these, I guess you can't really tell. But behind these tapes up here, all the movies are, are like lined up like so. Uh, and that's the way I like it. But now that we've extended the shelves down, it's, it's going to be sweet. I'm actually going to be able to have some kind of like decent organization here. But, you know, uh, I just gave away my secret how I uh, focus my shit. I look at, I smile at my teeth and once my teeth are fully in focus. But anyways... I think I'm gonna have to fucking like watch a funny movie, like a, a not a not a horror comedy, but like something that's not so fucking vile. And is this a horror film? I would say so. I would definitely say this is a horror film. So with that being said, I appreciate everybody for watching. Leave a six 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 in the comments. We're going on to day ten tomorrow. Uh, you know, currently it is the fifth of October, so I'm trying to keep them. You know, keep keep recording them as I go, so I'm not like scrounging. I don't want to be scrounging to film an episode because I actually want to complete the 31 days of horror challenge this year. So, uh, adios.